Hello and welcome to another GIMP tutorial. Today's GIMP tutorial is one of the most highly requested tutorials I usually get, so I thought I'd finally put it down. Today we're going to look at making the uh, the four-part Andy Warhol style image. Um, so it's kind of a pop art spin-off again. Now I've always done this um, the the hard way, if you like, which is to um, just go through the pop art tutorial um, with four different images or four variations of the same image, just changing all of the colours. Um, but it occurred to me that there must be an easier um, automatic way of doing it. So today, I'm going to show you the quick way of doing it. Anyway, so today we're going to need uh, an image, um, the GIMP as usual, and you're also going to need a calculator today, uh, just to make things a bit more interesting. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is open up the image that we want, and we just want to crop the image so that we just have um, the the head portion of the image that we want to use. So I'm just going to go over to here and select my crop tool and just select the part of the image that I want. So that should be enough for our purposes. Okay, and then I'll just uh, close that down. So the next thing we need to do is select this whole area. So we just go to select and all or you can just press control and A. And then from that I'm just going to copy the image to the clipboard. So we go to edit and copy. Now that's all we need to do with this image so far. We're actually going to open up a new image. So if I go to file and new, you'll see that it's already um, set the image size to the size of the selection that we've just made. Um, but we don't actually want it to be the same size as the clipboard. We want it to be the same size as the clipboard squared or times four, uh, if you like. So what we need to do is uh, just double both of these values, so double the width and double the height, which, because I'm not a maths genius, or even even slightly good at maths, uh, that's where our calculator comes in. So we take uh, 981 and we simply double it, so 981 times 2, and that's going to be 1962, so we just change that to that. And we do the same with 891, and that's 1782, so we just go 1782 and OK. Now that gives us an image that's exactly the right size. We've already got it saved to the clipboard so all we're going to need to do is just press Control and V and that will paste it right in the middle for us. Now if I press M for McDonald's or Move more importantly, uh, it moves to the Move tool. So just up here Move uh, and we can move this around wherever we need. So this is obviously going to go up in the top left hand corner so we just drop that there and you can see it's a floating selection at the moment so we're just going to uh, right click that and go to new layer and it becomes as it says a new layer and we just need to go through that process um, another three times so we just paste again we've got a floating layer so we just make that a new layer and then we move it over here and we need to try and line these up as well as we can but if it's not perfect, it doesn't matter because we can just crop it afterwards. Now I'm just going to check that all of those are lined up. Yep, that looks pretty good. Okay, so you should start to get an idea of what this image is going to look like already. Okay, so once we've got these four images pasted, uh, the next thing we need to do is make each of these images the size of the overall um, image layer, um, which I haven't explained very well, but it's actually very simple. So for each one, we're just going to right click it, go to uh, layer and layer to image size. And we just need to do that on all four of them. Now the next thing we need to do is change the color of each of these. Now the old way I did that was by painting a matte color over each of the main areas of color. So this would be, say, blue, this one would be green, the red would be bright red, but just to give it a matte color rather than the, the kind of uh, 256 color profile that we've got at the moment. Um, but the, there is actually an easier way of doing it, just by toggling the hue. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm just going to make the other ones invisible, just so you can see exactly what it is that I'm doing. Uh, we choose the layer that we're going to work on first, and then we go over here and we pick our, our, our fuzzy select tool, which looks like a magic wand. Um, and we select the white area on the image. 
so we just click and you can see the marching ants um, go around the white area that we've got okay so the marching ants are what we use to see that a selection has been made uh, we're then going to invert that selection so we go to select and invert or as it says with the shortcut key we can just press control and I and what that does is instead of selecting the white area it's now selected this area and then from that selection we can change the um, the hue so we simply go to colors um, hue and saturation and we just toggle this hue slider okay so for the first one we'll just make it nice and um, obvious that it's very different uh, we'll go for something like 180 the the numbers don't really matter at this stage and then we press OK and we're just going to do exactly the same thing for the other layers so we go to our fuzzy select tool we select that we press control and I which inverts the selection and then we use our hue um, slider now my toolbar looks a bit different um, there's another tutorial on how to make your toolbar look different um, I'll just be clicking here but remember you can go through colors and hue and saturation if you haven't got the button over here so for this hue I'm going to change it to something like that um, we can check these afterwards um, but they're very different at the moment so that's fine and then we move on to our next one so fuzzy select tool it's pretty straightforward control and I our hue slider we'll maybe go for something like that so we just check that that's sufficiently different. Yep, that looks good so far. And we just need to do our final one, which is here. I'll just do this as quickly as I can. And we change the hue. Okay. So there's our image so far. Now a lot of people might be quite happy to finish there. Um, it's a very striking image so far. It w it's worked well. Um, but there's actually a few more steps I'm going to go through very quickly. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is merge all of these layers. So we just press Control and M, M for merge, and click merge. And that just becomes one layer. And we're actually going to make some duplicates of this layer. So we're going to duplicate it twice. So we just click on this button here. Um, now with the... We'll just make this one invisible to begin with. Um, with the one in the background we're going to change what that one looks like uh, completely uh, so I'll just make the other one invisible so you can see what I do um, so we're only working on the very background layer at the moment we're going to change the threshold of this image so firstly I need to press control and shift and A to deselect everything or I could have gone through select and then none um, but the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to change this to just a simple black and white image and I mean solid black and white not grayscale um, so this is something that we do in all of the pop art tutorials so we're going to use our threshold button uh, which is this one here or you can go through colors and threshold and you can see that we get an image like this now this is just going to be used as a background image and I just want it to bring out some of the detail so I think something like uh, something like that will probably be fine but you might want to play around with this a little bit more then with this background copy I will just make that visible again um, if you've seen the other pop art tutorials you can probably guess what I'm going to do now uh, we're going to set this one to multiply in the layer mode so we just go up here to layer mode and click multiply and you can see that that brings out like a, an ink effect uh, in the background and this final one here is just to strengthen the colors um, just to make them a lot stronger so we're going to put that one back over the top and we can experiment with these again uh, we can have that as multiply which is possibly a little bit too dark I'll probably go with multiply but then um, make it slightly less opaque just to bring some of that color through um, so it might look at something a bit like that and then if I'm happy with all of the selections I've made and I've done this in quite a rush you might want to play with this a bit more until you find the colors that you're happy with um, I just press control M to merge everything again so we've just got the one layer which um, looks like our finished product then we just go through and save it as usual and we've got our complete Andy Warhol style image anyway I hope that's um, been fairly easily explained I hope it's easy to follow and I hope you enjoy playing with the effect and I'll see you next time